Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to talk about responsive YouTube iframes. You can easily embed YouTube videos onto your Canvas course. If you go to YouTube and click on any video, then click the share and embed, and you copy this code, and then you can paste it into your course. Let's go ahead and edit this page. From the rich content editor, you can put this using the embed code link, and you just paste that and submit it and that puts your video in there. What I'm going to be tinkering with today is the HTML editor. So if I scroll up here, I can see the iframe where my YouTube video is. It's right here, this is the code they give me. It's an iframe, there's a source, there's a width and a height, and some other code that they give me. And the result of that is a video that is static, in that, in this case, it's 560 pixels wide by 315 pixels tall. That's what Canvas said the width and the height should be, and that's what it remains on the page, regardless of the size of the page. Meaning, if I were to minimize this, maybe if I hide the menu, that video doesn't change. You can see that it just stays there as all the text and all of the other elements wrap around it. And the effect that I want to explore is how I can make this YouTube video change with the page. So if I shrink it down, then it grows and it becomes part of the content. There are various different ways that I'm going to show you how to do this. So I'm going to go into my code. I'm going to go into the HTML editor and we're going to look at the code for one of these. Now this first video, this is the one that YouTube gave me and I want to isolate the second video, which has the video at a hundred percent width. And so it always takes up the entire width of the screen, regardless how small or big the screen is. If it's a projector or a large computer monitor or a small smartphone, it'll always be 100% of the width. So to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to pull up a PowerPoint presentation here. And this is the code that I copied over from that Canvas course, and I'm going to explain the elements of this code to you. So the first thing we have is a div style equals width of 100. And what a div is, is basically a box, a container for whatever we put inside the div. And in this case, I'm saying that the div width is 100%. So the div will be right here. And regardless how big the screen is, it's always going to be 100%. So it could be small, it could be big, it'll just be that width. And so that's what I'm saying right here and nothing more. Now, if there's not a lot of content, the div is gonna be small and narrow. For example, if it's just a header, then it's going to be about that size. But as I put more content inside of the div, the div will grow and it's always going to keep that width. And so that's the first element that I'm looking at. Now I have another div here. Let's draw that div as another box. The div, I have some code. You're, you're going to want to copy this and I'm going to make this code available to you. Position is relative. The width is also a hundred percent. So this I'm saying that it's going to be as wide as that first div. An overflow is hidden, meaning to demonstrate that, let's suppose that this is the size of that div and I want to put a picture on here. So I'm just gonna drag, drag a thumbnail on here and suppose I put the picture on here and the picture nestles in there but it hangs over the side a little bit. In this case, it'll actually get cropped out. Anything that's outside of the dimensions of this div is going to be hidden. So here you can see some of it's off the screen. All right, so let's look at these other things. So the width is 100%, but it's 100% not of the screen, but of the div. So if I were to have the first div as 50% of the screen, if I were to say, okay, this is how wide the div is, this next div is 100%, so it's going to be 100% of that 50%. So let's just keep that right here for now and then we have the overflow hidden, and then we have the padding from the top is 56.2%. And to explain padding, let me just put these off to the side just for a moment, and let's focus on this first div. So I have the div on my web page, and the div is gonna be nestled right here at the top and the far left. Now suppose I want it to sit out a little bit. You know, sometimes you might have two divs on a page and you don't want them to be right next to each other because there might be text on one and an image on the other and you don't want the text to go right to the edge of the image. You want there to be a little bit of space. Okay, now suppose I want some space from this element, this div in this case, and the other elements on the web page. In that case, I would want some margins. 
And so I can put this by default, it's going to be right nestled close to the others, but I can put a margin from the top and I'm going to say, I want that margin to be about 25 pixels. And so that would move that down about 25 pixels. I'm just guesstimating like what that would represent. And then I also want margins on the left hand side and I want that to be 25 pixels as well. So what that would do is it would move it out from the left 25 pixels. So it creates a space around the outside edge of the diff. That's what a margin is. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, but that's conceptually what that would look like. That, that's what the margins are. Now for this other div, now we're looking at this line right here. This div is going to nestle right in there. And so if I wanted margins between the red box and the blue box, I could put the margin on this side, or I could even put padding on the blue side. The padding would push anything on the inside out to however many pixels I specify. In this case, so what I have here this is kind of interesting. I have a box, uh, it's a relative position, and then I have padding at 56.25%, meaning whatever that width is, the height is going to be 56.25% of the width. And that number is not a random number. This is actually a very specific number because for high resolution movies, for anything, for your computer screen, your TV, the resolution, the ratio from left to top is always going to be 16 by 9. And so when you look at 16 and 9, you divide 9 by 16, then you get 0.5625. To get the percentage, just multiply that by 100, and you get 56.25%. And so that's why I'm putting padding at the top. I want, I want this, this height I don't care about how many pixels it is, but I want it to be 56.25% of the width. And that way it'll fit this, this uh, video in perfectly. So if I put this there, looks like we actually came pretty close, <laughs> just on, on guesstimating right there. And so this blue box is going to be the same height as the red box, because it's whatever height, is, whatever sits in there. So it's going to expand automatically, and you don't really have to think about that. And then this video is going to sit right in there. So the video is the code right here. This is the iframe. This is what I copied over from YouTube. It's the exact same stuff except for I added some more style. So add this to your code. Put style, position, absolute, and top zero, left zero, right zero, and then the width is 100% and the height is 100%. And then just border none. So that's the styling that I add to the YouTube video that sits within this red box, which is the div right here and that sits within this other div. And none of this is seen or noticed by the Canvas users, by your students. And so once you have this code, then you have some options. So right now, let me put these off to the side a little bit. Right now this div is 100%, meaning it's going to be as wide as the screen right there. I could also put the width at 50%, for example, and I could say, okay, this is going to be about half the width of the screen. So let's look at what that looks like in a real Canvas course. Let's get out of the HTML editor. I'm actually going to get out of editing mode so that we can look at some examples of these tables. So here's a table that is just 100% the width of the screen. The problem with this, if I were to make this a little bit bigger, is that the video becomes very large. 100% if it's a projector screen or if it's a large monitor, that takes up a whole lot of real estate. So maybe you don't really want it to be exactly 100% of the screen, or maybe you want it to be 100% of the screen when the screen is small, but then if the screen is large, you want it to be fixed at a certain pixel. So this is the exact same code, except for I said, I want this, the initial div, the first, that blue box on the previous screen, I want that to be 100% until it gets to 800 pixels. And then I think that 800 pixels is large enough and so we're going to put a max width of 800 pixels. And so we can see what that looks like. Let me get rid of some of these other elements here. All right, so that's the third table. Here's the normal YouTube table. This one is 100% and it just keeps growing to 100%. And then this table down here is 100% until it gets to a certain width and then it stops growing. You can see the table above, it just grows and grows and it, it forever grows and this other one grows until whatever width you put, and you could put 600, you could put 5, 800. 
I probably wouldn't put beyond 800. I think 1,000, even 900 is probably too much. But you can see it takes up 100% of the width when the screen is small, and that's important to me. And then I just don't want it to grow to be too large because then that takes up too much of the real estate. Another thing I did is that initial div, I put it at 50% of the screen. And so no matter how big or small the screen is, it takes up half of the real estate. So you can see this is exactly half of the width. And if I were to you know, make some changes here, if I open up the top menu, for example, it still takes up exactly half of that real estate. I'll close this down. Now that gets pretty small. If it's it's fine if it's a projector, a large monitor, but if you get down to mobile devices and you're saying take up 50% of the screen, then it turns into a small icon. And so I can say, well, let's modify that. Let's take up 50% of the screen until you get down to 400 pixels and don't go any smaller than 400 pixels. So min width is 400 pixels. So you can see here, as the screen gets larger, then it fills up 50% of that real estate. And when it gets too small, it just stays at that height. And so there are various options. You could put a minimum width, for example, of 300 pixels if you wanted, a maximum width of 800 pixels, and then you could just say, take up 100% of the screen until you get that small or that large, and then just keep it there, keep it small or large. And so this is the proper way how you would make a responsive frame. Now if I go into the HTML code, go up to this first page, you can see that YouTube specifies a very specific pixel height and width. So it has to be 560 wide and it's 315 tall. You can manually change that to whatever you want as long as it's 16 by 9 ratio. If I were to say I want that to be 100% wide and 315 pixels tall, it's going to look really strange. For one, the thumbnail is not going to fit in the image because a lot of it's hidden off the screen. And when I go to play this, then yeah, it's responsive and everything. It takes up 100% of the width, but then you can see all this, this black bars. If it's too small, there's black bars in the top and the bottom. If it's too large, then there's all these large black bars on the left and the right. And so you can't just say, I want this video to be 100% wide. You're going to have to put it into a box and say 100% wide, but with that padding of 56.2%. Now let me show you one last pitfall. You might be thinking about this first video, well you put that at 100% width, why not just put it at 100% height? And it doesn't actually work that way. And so if I were to save that 100%, it, this, the browser just doesn't know what to do. If you say 100% height, well that just doesn't really mean anything, and they know that you don't really want it to be 100% of the vertical real estate of the web page because then you wouldn't be able to see anything else. It just doesn't know what to do with that. And so it turns out to be something kind of kind of janky like this, where yes, it does know what the width is, and that's a, fi a very finite thing. But the height, a web page, a canvas course can be as tall as you want it to be. If you keep adding content and more content, then it's going to just keep getting taller and taller. And so you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that, um, that the default here's uh, 560 wide, and then that would be 315 tall. And so if you change the, the width, if you want to make this half as tall, you could say uh, 560 divided by 2 is 280. And this would be about 157, 158, something like that, 157.5. And so I can save that. And that keeps the dimensions, it keeps it 16 by 9, but then it doesn't grow any larger or smaller. So I'll go ahead and change that back to the YouTube dimensions. This is what YouTube thinks a good video width and height should be, and I don't disagree with them. Feel free to review this video if you need to go through it again, and also visit our supplementary website, howtocanvas.com, where you can read the blog post where I talk more about responsive iframes. Also visit us on our social media sites for more tips and tricks. And finally, you'll have access to this page here in my Canvas account. And after this video, I'm gonna post the code for each one of these embedded YouTube videos underneath. So you can just copy the code directly, put it into your own Canvas course and modify it from there without having to start from scratch. Finally, I hope that you'll take a moment to subscribe to this channel. I appreciate every one of my subscribers, and I'm going to be posting a lot more tips and tricks and tutorials about how to canvas, and I really hope that you'll join me on this journey.
Happy teaching and learning.